Hello everyone, this is the Theoretical Doctor and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome! This is a series on the chapter Transport in Animals and Plants of Chapter 8 of the STPM Semester 2 Biology Series. Check out the full playlist on my channel. If you want access to flashcards on this topic and other videos, do click the link below. It is available on my website as well as slides on this topic. In this video, we will be continuing on the water transport in the roots of plants. In this video, the subtopics we will be touching on would be the root pressure theory, cohesion tension theory, and transpiration pool, as well as the factors affecting the rate of transpiration. Root pressure theory, it is the active transport of inorganic ions into the xylem from endodermal cells and causes the water potential of the xylem sap to lower drastically. This draws water from the surrounding root cells to enter the xylem by osmosis. The hydrostatic pressure generated by this mechanism helps to push the water up the the stem to the leaves but not strong enough to reach the top of tall trees. Root pressure is created by an active process which requires energy and is believed to cause guttation. And guttation ensures that water and dissolved inorganic ions continue to move up a plant where transpiration rates are low. So root pressure is believed to cause guttation and it is a process whereby water oozes out at the tips of the leaves and normally occurs at night or in a humid day. Basically like like sweating of the plant like that. So root pressure alone is not sustainable in the long run. Why? There are three different reasons. First, the magnitude of the root pressure that is generated in a plant is not sufficient, not enough, to push water upwards to the top of most trees. Second, the rate of water loss is far below the normal rate of transpiration. Third, the pressure of the xylem sap is found to be negative. Cohesion tension theory and transpiration pull. So the transportation of water up the stem was this discovered to be pulled from the top of the plant, not pushed from below. In root pressure theory, the water is pushed from below, but in cohesion tension theory and transpiration pull, it is pulled from above. So this force is caused by the evaporation of water from the leaves, and the loss of water lowers the water potential of the cell. So if you remember in the previous video, water will move from an area of high water potential to an area of low water potential, and that does not require energy. So water is drawn from neighboring mesophyll cells with a higher water potential. As water molecules leave the xylem to replace those lost by evaporation, they pull other water molecules with them. And this continues until water is drawn from the xylem vessels in the leaf down a water potential gradient. And it is through the apoplast, symplast, and vacuolar pathways. So if you want to know more about these three different pathways, do check out my previous video on this. So the strong cohesion or stickiness of water and the strong adhesion forces whereby water molecules adhere to the walls of the xylem vessel forms the transpiration stream and the continuity of the water column form will not break unless the cohesive and adhesive forces are overcome by gravitational pull. When water is pulled out from the xylem vessels by capillary action, a low water pressure is created inside the xylem vessels and this is called the transpiration pull. So the pulling force in the transpiration pull causes water to be sucked up the xylem vessels. The pool generated this way is sufficient to move water up to the leaves and this is made possible as the column of water is continuous without a break and the xylem vessels in which the water is being transported is able to withstand the tremendous pressure. So the picture on the left, this one, shows a model demonstrating the cohesion tension theory and transpiration pool. When a long glass tube has one end immersed in a beaker of water, a column of water forms in the glass tube here. So there's water in the beaker and then this is the glass tube. If a wet sponge is placed at the other end here, water seems to be drawn up from the beaker and the ascent as the water moves up through the glass tube can be accelerated if the apparatus is exposed to wind and higher temperature. So basically as water starts evaporating from here, you will notice that the water continues to move up. It seems like as if the water molecules are connected and they, they will continue to move up. So when water evaporates from the sponge, 
sponge, it is instantaneously replaced by water from the tube, which is then replaced by water from the beaker. So when water molecules live here, they evaporate. It is replaced by the water here. And the water over here is replaced by the water over here. So they're continuously pulled up. So that's how it explains transpiration and the cohesion tension theory. How I'd like to remember cohesion tension theory is basically the pool of the water. And transpiration is when evaporation occurs and water continues to move up. Water is being pulled up. Therefore, in the cohesion tension theory, water is being pulled up. In root pressure theory, remember pressure press? So water is being pushed into the xylem. Meanwhile, the picture on the right over here is a summary of the cohesion tension theory and the transpiration pool. The water is absorbed from the roots and the water is then transported through the three different pathways which are the apoplast, symplast, and vacuolar pathway. So as evaporation occurs, the water is being pulled up through the xylem vessels as the water molecules are actually linked by hydrogen bonds. So check out my previous video on the different pathways of water transport in plants for a detailed explanation. Here are several factors affecting the rate of transpiration. There are external factors as well as internal factors. So the first one, external factors. You have temperature. High temperature increases the rate of transpiration. So when the temperature is high, there is an increase in kinetic energy and movement of water molecules. So they move out through the stomata more quickly. And high temperature also reduces uses the humidity of the air and increases the rate of diffusion of water vapor from the leaves. So low temperature will reduce the rate of transpiration as the process is reversed. So when there's high temperature, more water is being evaporated, water movement is faster. So the rate of transpiration is higher. Next is light intensity. So during the day, increasing the light intensity stimulates the stomatal opening and increases the rate of transpiration. However, in the dark, stomatal will close so the rate of transpiration decreases humidity humidity decreases the rate of transpiration when there is low humidity the gradient of water vapor saturation between the substomatal cavity and the atmosphere increases thus the rate of transpiration increases and vice versa so take note the explanation that i just gave was if the humidity is low but over here what i'm trying to say is that when the humidity is high the rate of transpiration is low whereas when the humidity is low, the rate of transpiration is high. Air movement. Moving air, basically wind, carries away the water vapor outside the stomata. This creates a steep concentration gradient. The water vapor from the substomatal cavity diffuses rapidly to outside and the rate of transpiration increases on dry and windy conditions. When there is little air movement, water vapor accumulates around the stomata. So this will decrease the concentration gradient and reduces water water loss. So basically, high or increased air movement will increase the rate of transpiration and low air movement or reduced air movement reduces the rate of transpiration. And then water supply. If the rate of transpiration is higher than the rate of water absorption from the soil, stomata closes. So this will reduce the water loss by transpiration. And then internal factors. You have the leaf surface area as well as the number and distribution of stomata. For leaf surface area, increased leaf surface area increases the rate of transpiration. When it comes to the number and distribution of stomata, plants with fewer stomata, thin needle-shaped and rolled leaves decreases the surface area that is being exposed to air. So this reduces the evaporation of water from the leaves. Because remember, when there is increased air movement, there is increase in transpiration. So therefore, if the surface area being exposed is smaller, there will be less um, um, evaporation of water from the leaves because basically the surface area exposed to air is less. Here is a summary of the water transport in plants. Now, why is transpiration important? Transpiration maintains a water potential gradient that moves water and dissolved minerals from the roots to the aerial parts of the plant. And evaporation of water from the leaves absorbs the latent heat of vaporization, thereby cooling of the leaves during hot and dry weather so they do not get burned easily and they do not well die. They're able to su survive. If you've reached this point, thank you very much. Hit the like button if you found it helpful as it does help in reaching out to others as well. Do support my channel by pressing the subscribe button so I will know and it gives me motivation to continue producing content like this in the future. And finally, share this video to those who might find this helpful. See you in the next one.